We're here with uh, continuing our conversations with uh, potential candidates for the uh, City Council of Isle of Palms. Election to be held November 7th. We're sitting here with current council member Kevin Popson. Kevin, um, you've been on the Isle of Palms for how long? We moved there in August of 1985, 38 years, going on 39. And, and who was we at the time? It was, uh, my wife, Sean, and I. No kids at the time? No kids at the time. Okay. They came a little later. All right. I want to ask you about that. Uh, how, uh, how many kids do you have? We have two. Uh, our son, Macaulay, is 31 years old, and our daughter, Lauren, is 23 years old. Are they in the area? Uh, my daughter is. Uh, my son is up in a project that we're doing up in the uh, eastern shore of Virginia, building homes for us. Oh, good. He's working with you. Yeah. How's that working out? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, sometimes it's a little stressful. Yeah. You know, I'm his boss, yeah. but, I'm, but I'm also... So definitely his, a different relationship. So, so, but I'm also his dad, so i gotta, I got to juggle it a little I, bit. I, I grew but, up uh, in our family business, and, and <clears> my son is in my real estate business, so I understand it's... And uh, uh, I hope my wife doesn't see this, but he, he has a little <laughs> bit of her in him, and so uh, we argue <laughs> probably more than what we should, but... Uh, and was he the one that introduced you to the University of Mississippi? He did, Lynn, he did. Um, I, I'm, you know, I think you've asked me this a while back, or some people asked me, and I'm not really sure how he found it. I think, uh, I think he found it through the guidance counselor of, of Bishop England uh -huh. and or Sandy Stone's son, yeah. who went there, I think, two years before. But he found it. I guess he did a lot of online stuff, and we drove there. And, and as you know, as soon as you drive into Oxford, it's incredible, and the and the University of Mississippi, it's like this is this is it. I'm sure he got one look at uh, the local female population and said, this is the place for me. I, I believe that that helped. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't the football at the time. It's gotten better, but it couldn't have been the football at the time. Well, yeah, and, you know, he's, he's, a big, he's a big sports, sports guy. And, uh, and I, I don't want to say almost the same, but he, he's a really big college baseball yeah. Ole Miss Rebel fan. And uh, I, he's, they're pretty close, whether football or uh, – uh, baseball is number one, but uh, he he went to a lot of the games in right field, that, as you know. Yeah, great um, place. Yeah, great environment, uh, unbelievable. And the year they had two years ago was a Cinderella story that you know, unbelievable from being this close to not even getting in the SEC playoffs to winning the national championship. La last one, incredible. In, it, it it was, um, and 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 no matter what the Ole Miss football team does now, or baseball team does, or whatever, we've got that in the bank. We've got that in the bank, and we can always right. get back to it. So. And, and and Kiffin is just fun. With, you know, we're, they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and it, it, it's a story with him, win or lose. Yeah, it is. So it's it's it, it's it, we're enjoying it. Um, I hope we a, haven't ruined college sports, though. And I know we're going off on tangents that we shouldn't, but I hope we don't ruin college sports with all this NIL business. It's it's just yeah, become it's, a bigger and bigger business instead of you know. And it's it's gotten complicated from what I can see, and how they're how they're you know getting through all this is beyond me. Before you saw the light and became Ole Miss fans, who did you grow up cheering for? I, I always really have been a Dallas Cowboy fan since the Ice Bowl. Okay, that's um, a long time ago. Yeah, Let's well, well, it's it's a nineteen sixty. That was the championship game before the Super Bowl. Well, and in Green Bay, I always was beating Dallas. Yeah, and and I just I, they beat them that sixteen seconds left. Bart Starr you know, runs it in, and and I just started feeling sorry for them that they just always kept losing. So I just and I was a big Tom Landry. Yeah. Fan, so just just that, always the, the fedora on the sideline, the suit. I always yeah. been a big fan, and. Uh, you know, we won a couple of Super Bowls in the 70s, and uh, we were quiet until the early 90s and won two in a row. But uh, Are you still a Cowboy fan? Oh, absolutely. Jerry Jones fan? No. Okay. No, Dad, sir. he'll see this. So. No, no, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah we, I don't know. We, 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 Cowboys could be maybe a little bit better off with, without him, but I guess we can't do that since he owns them. Um, so sports, you guys enjoy sports. What else do you enjoy about living in the low country? Uh, Specifically, the Low Country, because Ole Miss and the Cowboys don't have so much to do with the Low Country. Right. What is it that What is it that brought you here? And then two, what is it that keeps you here? Well, to to, to go back, um, um, a, a, after college, I got on. I got hired by a company that built chimneys for power plants, and um, I was a field accountant. So I would <clears throat> be in a trailer doing all the cost accounting, payroll, all that other kind of stuff. But I 
get that done early and I'd go work on the chimney with the guys. And my first job was in Uluga, Oklahoma, <laughs> north of Tulsa. And they called and said, hey, we want you to go to Georgetown, South Carolina. So off I came and I was there for two years um, and uh, just loved it. It's and an interesting city. It really is. It, it is. And then, you know, obviously you, you come up to, you know, okay. you come down to Charleston. And Myrtle's up, Charleston's yeah, down. Yeah, and at the time, um, I don't know that Myrtle Beach had much of an airport at all. Mm -hmm. So if you had to fly anywhere, you had to drive down to Charleston, and, uh, even at the old airport that a lot of people would remember. But, um, but you know, and so back, I went to different Montana, Owensboro, Kentucky, Springer, Arizona. And then I was promoted in our home office uh, in Kansas City. And um, I just, I got tired of the Midwest. And I said, I, I've got to get back to the coast. And South Carolina was great. And uh, my wife and I, she was able to find a job down here. But I just left. Uh, I had gotten my uh, Missouri State real, real estate license. And I just left my job and just came down here and got into real estate. Who'd you start with it down here? Cole Banker okay. uh, on Tall Pine Road, right there off of uh, Johnny Dodds. Um, uh, two two years in in uh, in that side of the business. And so you were just a, a realtor then, just a realtor. And then now you're a developer and uh, develop neighborhoods and such like that. How did you transition from being a realtor into a developer? Um, a guy by the name of Tim Guy. Um, called me and said, hey, I'm getting ready to, to do the land sales or lot sales at Hopcock Creek Plantation, but I'm leaving to go help my buddies develop Charleston National. You need to get this position. So I interviewed with uh, the Beach Company and some other folks, and I got the job. And so I went, and, and Hopcock was just starting, uh, Long Point Road. In fact, we, Hopcock Creek, Hidden Cove, and the port were really the only things out there. Okay. And I-526 wasn't there. It was just a two-lane road. Yeah. And uh, and I remember the folks coming in, the, the prospects coming in saying, we can't live way out here. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It was just totally amazing. So, uh, <laughs> And then I got involved with Hopcock Creek. Um, I got involved with the development work. Um, they needed help. So I, I started learning about rosewater and sewer and got, got in the middle of all that. And then... The beach company calls me and says, you know, we're going to make you president of the homeowners association since they were the declarant and you have to run it until you turn it over. So that was my first 1980. It's an introduction to politics too, almost. Abso absolutely. So <laughs> Nobody's make, calling you to say you're doing a great job. And, and I, I had no clue, you know, about the homeowners into, association. Right. But, uh, but uh, uh, since 1988, and I'll, I'll come back, but since 1988 to 2016 when I left John Whelan, I was a president of a association or multiple associations, nonstop. So I lived in the in the homeowners association world for all that time. Right. Um, but after Hopcock Creek, I got involved with Brickyard Plantation early on, and uh, the same thing happened there. I busted in our road right off of 17, and I'm sitting there with my Explorer open, with my handout materials and my map of Brickyard. And you really hardly could even drive back in there. And people would come up and say, we can't live way out here. Yeah. And so... Uh, I can remember when... Um, oh, gosh, what's his name? He built the hot dog joint out here. Yeah. He lives um, on Isle of Yeah, Co Cosmics Jack. Yeah, Co Jack. Yeah. Jack yeah. Hurley. Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, he put that hot dog place out there. And I was like, what is he thinking? This is a million miles out of Mount Pleasant. Right. Now you go by it without blinking and you go 30 more miles in the Mount, not 30 more miles, but you go 10 more miles of Mount Pleasant. Uh, up until maybe a year ago, there was a sign right be coming south, right before you got to the Brickyard entrance, that said Mount Pleasant seven miles. And they finally, <laughs> finally took Realize it. Realize we're in Mount Pleasant Yeah, now. finally took it down. Uh, but... Uh, Brickyard, all the 90s was Brickyard, and then in 1998, uh, we bought a Hamlin Plantation. Uh, Jeff Coggin, Central Corporation, who I worked for at Brickyard, and John Whelan Home partnered on Hamlin Plantation. And uh, so I got all the roads, water, sewer in, I got the amenities in, we were selling the lots. John Whelan was building his homes, Central was building his homes, and uh, in early 2002, or, or summer of 2002, 
John Whelan called me and said, hey, I'm buying Dumas West. Would you come work and manage the place for me? So in August of 2002, he closed on Dunes West, and it was my first day. And so I ran Dunes West, and then I eventually became the Charleston president of the Charleston division for John Whelan Homes mm -hmm. with everything, home building, sales, development, homeowner association, anything involved with the, that you touch in the development world you know, was under my, my leadership. And you did that for till when? Till 2016. And then you um, did your own thing now? We, we, uh, the guy that ran the Charlotte division and I formed our own land <clears throat> uh, development, home building, real estate company here in Charleston. Uh, just a small, we did a little bit of land development management work. We built some homes. I still hold a broker and charge license that I've had for 35 years. I don't do a lot of real estate other than if we're buying something to build. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> um, but so I've kept that uh, active uh, active as well. We the downturn 08 to 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 2012 right really took its toll on John Whelan. It took its toll on everybody. It took almost took me out of business. Yeah, and I'm right there with you. Yeah. But um, uh, and then so uh, the, the an equity group came in and bought J John's debt. And, and of course, the work in progress assets, and they infuse some money to you know get these homes built, and then you could see the writing on the wall that they weren't going to be a home builder; they were going to sell. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we figured, hey, let's do our own thing. While and we can. and they they were really chasing Pulte Homes, and you know if Pulte Homes bought, they they weren't going to need two division presidents. So right. we just figured it was time to kind of go on our own. Um, so you're you're. Obviously, you're running for re-election. Uh, when we talked earlier, I wasn't sure that you wanted to run for re-election. I'm assuming these 30 years of being in the real estate business and the development business have influenced your thoughts on the overriding issue of this next election, which is the short-term rental thing. Absolutely. And so, would you have run again if there wasn't the short-term rental? That's a really good question. Well, that's um, what I'm here for. Yes. Uh, and and yeah, to be frank, uh, I was counting the days, I was counting my days down to mm -hmm. December 31st. Um, you know, we, uh, the, the Rusty Streetman and, and Jimmy Ward and uh, Philip Pounds and I got elected four years ago. Mm -hmm. And we had sworn in, um, you were there in mm -hmm. January, we had one meeting in chambers on February, COVID came. Yeah. And it, was, changed everything. And, and it was yeah. it was crazy. We had three. You're having a meeting every day. We for had a little three while. meeting. We had three years of meetings in in our first year. And yeah, we really didn't, did. we didn't even get a chance to you know, figure out the dynamics of council information's meetings. changing. Directives are changing yeah. from the upstate. I mean, I, we would put something. We would write an article on Tuesday, and by Thursday it would be completely changed. Who could be on the beach? Could you sit on the beach? Could you stand on the beach? Did you right. have to walk? Could you have water? Open the oh. connector. Close <laughs> yeah, the connector. Exactly. Um, and, uh, and I voted against the mask mandate because I just didn't feel like you can enforce it. And if the red or the red light, if the, if the Harris Teeter didn't want you to be in there with a, with, without, with a mask or had to have a mask on, then that was okay. So but let them do it. But, mm -hmm. you know, government shouldn't mandate it. And I got a lot of nasty emails, as you can imagine, with that, with that vote. But uh, No one's shy about giving their opinion on yeah. your opinion on either one of these islands or any of the islands that I deal right, with. Right, and I, and I, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I work a lot, and so I was, you know, I gave my four years. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this short-term rental property rights issue to me, um, you know, just really thought, you know, about jumping back in. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then also, too, um, the reason why I jumped in four years ago was because I thought I could help. You know, we were getting ready to fix the marina. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of docks in my life, right. permitting and so forth. Um, we were getting ready to do the public safety building. Exactly. I thought I could help being a home builder. Um, drainage, I put miles of drain pipe in and retention ponds, whatever. And I just, I thought I could, thought I could help. Um, and that's the same thing this time as well. Right. We still have drainage going on. It's going to go on for a while. Uh, we're getting ready to redo the public dock mm -hmm. down at the marina, and um, and then we're we're considering uh, renovating the city hall um, building. Yeah, the original so, one. Yeah. Right. So, with that in mind, I thought, hey, maybe try it again. But really, it came down to try to help fight.
for property rights in the short term rentals. So that is your basic stance on the short term rental thing is you feel like it's an infringement on people's property rights? Absolutely. And and I, and I've I've been clear. In fact I I, I think I've in the meetings stopped. you generally stand up and say, Hey, popular or not, this is this is my stance. You know. Yeah, I um, I, I, I sometimes I, I feel like I'm a I'm a broken record, but it really it real bo what's it boils down to, is it sixteen hundred the right number? You know, all this information that's out there. You know, some of it is so, some of it's good, some of it's bad, whatever. But it boils down to me is I I, I can't imagine I I struggle with the thinking that a, a council of nine or a majority people of of council. Can tell me or you or anybody uh, how, what they can and cannot do with their property, mm -hmm. and to me it doesn't and it doesn't distinguish whether it's me, you, an LLC, a partnership, or low dart. You know, we there was a vote to strip them of their zoning, mm -hmm. which I was the only one that voted against it, mm -hmm. and I I got heck with that. Mm -hmm. But I I believe that. They have the, the the right to their property and the use of and their property. And you want to be consistent for and, the and, and neighborhood I'll, or for the businesses. And it's I, the same I, thing. I'm not changing my mind. Right. And so, uh, and and it just boils down to that for me. Uh, we've never you don't play golf, do you? I <laughs> I haven't played golf in a while, but yes, I used to play a lot. Did I, you? I actually used to be pretty good. But really? Are you going to go back to it anytime soon? Uh you know, we got I, great golf on the island. That's the only reason. Oh, I'm absolutely, asking. and I, we. We moved when we moved here. They were just finishing the harbor course, and uh, so I got to play that a lot. I got to play, um, you know, the the links. links. Uh, yeah, and uh, and of course we we bought the golf course in uh, Dunes West in '05. I'm still a member there. Okay, um, but I you're was, not getting to play. You're too busy, right? You got to be with exactly. Yeah, and and now you know campaigning and all that. In fact, even if I wanted to play, I couldn't because my clubs. Are up in my son's house <laughs> in Bellhaven, Virginia, because I took him up there hoping I could play up there. Right. Because we we've got twenty seven holes of golf up there. But uh, so one of these days I'm going to get back into it. Okay. Uh, you think your son will come back down and settle back down here, uh, or, or will uh, you just move with the jobs that you guys have right now? Absolutely. Uh, we have we have two large tracks in Bluffton and another one in Savannah, and right now we're we're selling you know pods to Lenars and mm -hmm. the. Dr. Hortons of the world, but there are pieces that we look that we want to sort of separate to where we can build our homes. Right. We also have groups that that um, want us to build houses for them, either for mm -hmm. rent or for sale. And we've actually got two or three deals we're working on now. So we're hoping that we have those lined up to where we can bring my son back down to Bluffton, the Bluffton area, yeah. and start building down oh, there. That's beautiful down there, too. Yeah, absolutely. That ride from Beaufort to Bluffton, you almost feel like you're driving into the Keys down there. You yeah. know, it's, it's really gorgeous. Yep. Um, we talked about short-term rental. We know there's election. Everybody, there's obviously other stuff going on. What would you like to, also the people to be aware of, 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 of things that are in front of council that are important to think about? Uh, I don't uh, I have to think about what's in front of us. Um, or you know, could be coming. In well, front of it could us. be coming up. I know we're. Um, we had a candidates forum on Monday night and asked kind of what the major or your two priorities or issues okay. are. And uh, I've always held safety. I mean, the, the elephant in the room was the short term rental thing. Of course. But we we were going to discuss that anyway. And there's a referendum out there, so. Um, safety is always number one. You know that's what we're. When you say safety, you mean in terms of public police, safety, in terms police, of the, the bridge and those sort police, of things. Police, fire. You know, we, I think it's important for council that we we need to keep our residents as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. So whatever we need to do, whatever we need to furnish, the fire um, um, guys and the police guys, whatever they need, we should be be doing. Um, the second thing that sort of relates to me is. Um, retention mm. we we keep losing firemen and policemen to other cities basically for more money mm -hmm. um, benefits a little are, more action a little more action yeah and, well and, and 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 like a, a police officer lives in goose creek and he drives here to work goose creek offers him you know whatever ten thousand more and that's, drive home that's twenty thousand more cause yeah right, yeah so um i think it's in this upcoming year and and last year at this time we had we we gave um, 
I think it was a five thousand dollar bonus and a two and a half percent cost of living raise. Actually, I, I made the motion and it passed. And so I hope that we can at this time of year again do that as well. Uh, I think it's really important. We we can't afford to keep losing our police and our fire and people that work at the rec that that do wonderful things or or our city administration or public mm -hmm. works. I mean, we can't. They're all just great people, and they work hard, and we just got to figure a way to, um, to to help them out. Before we go, is there anything that you want to your your closing statement to the people? This is going to come out just a few days before the election, so is there anything that you want to say um, directly to the voters out there? Yeah, um, you that know, you haven't already said. We we one of the things that, um, that I would like the public to know that really doesn't get much play is in the last four years we have accomplished a lot on the city. We redid the marina, uh, we redid the public safety building, uh, we read, we have better leases now in our restaurant and the, uh, the marina uh -huh. store. We have brand new buildings that, right. we, did, that we didn't pay for. Um, good we leadership have, in we those have places, have I good think. Good leadership. We've got a great staff that works really, really hard. Our, our financial situation is in great shape. Um, drainage, we've constantly been, been working mm -hmm. our way through drainage. Um, and two new police, or a new, a new, new police, police chief, chief, a new fire chief that mm -hmm. are doing a great job. So there's a lot of good that, that we've done in the last four years, and I hope that if I get elected, we can carry on for the next four and continue these, uh, these, these same things. Um, uh, I will continue to fight for property rights for sure, um, and um, I just um, I'm, I, I've been honored to be sitting on city council for four years. Um, uh, it, it was just a re really a pleasure. It was a learning experience for me, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'll work hard if. The, and if it's the, a lot of work. If people don't it, people it, may it not get, grasp how much work it is. It is, and um, I, I'd be grateful if uh, you know I had their vote for another four years. All right, brother. I appreciate you coming in. That's it. That's it.